Welcome back to the Sioux City Show. This is episode eight. I'm hosting this thing. My name is Taylor Grody. Today I am joined in the Honeywave Media Studio by Lloyd Lee, the founder of Cuneo. Yes, Lloyd, sir. go ahead and tell us about yourself and about Cuneo for a second. Oh, myself. Born and raised in Sioux City, Iowa. Um, love the 712. Um, I uh, left and came back. And when I did, I decided to start Cuneo. Uh, and Cuneo is what we do. We're a mobile platform to help local businesses reach uh, local customers through uh, that mobile device that everybody carries with them all the time. Awesome. Yeah. And I am a, I'm a recent, relatively recent adopter of Cuneo. I think I started probably three months ago is when, you know, I'd already, I'd always seen the, uh, the advertisements around and I guess I've never considered myself a couponer. Mm-hmm. You know, and like I, I finally like I had a buddy actually. It was the, the the social the social networking effect. You know, mm-hmm. I had a buddy say, "Dude, you got to get this deal so we can go out to lunch together." And uh, we both got you know ha- a buy one get one at Cahill's, and I was like, "Okay, that's that's it. That's, <laughs> that's a good one." Yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of people board. use that one. You know, uh, I'm not even. I mean, I'm not a couponer either, right? Uh-huh. Like, we couponing the coupon side is the vehicle that we use. Um, so like. The whole point of Cuneo is to connect the businesses, connect businesses to local people and help local people connect to local businesses. And so, you know, we have, to, uh, like I said, the vehicle that does that is, is you know, money, I guess, save, mm-hmm. saving money. So on the business end, it's, it's inexpensive for them to use it. And then on the user side, you know, uh, we just enjoy saving some money some places. And so um, that's kind of how I chose to go about doing that, right? Mm-hmm. Um and I kind of saw what some of the other, uh, you know, couponing um, platforms were doing, and I just thought I could do it better. Cool. And you can you can uh, you can call out the big player who, who yeah. you're talking about, right? So yeah. That, uh, that'd be Groupon. Yeah. That's actually yeah. So that's how that's how it got started. Is um, I was I was uh, I was living overseas and came back and was pretty broke and was just bored. Um, looking for something to do, living in the parents' basement, and uh, technically living on the, the upper floor. So, but it just you know mm-hmm. everybody gets the idea when you say the basement. So, yep. living at the parents' house and uh, just didn't have any money, and so got under Groupon and saw that there was only a couple businesses there uh, in Sioux City that were using it, but there were like loads of Sioux Falls and Omaha businesses. Mm-hmm. But um, I would just you know why why don't we have any from around here that I could go enjoy? Uh, and then I just looked into that model and that model is, it's just not favorable for a business, a small business, uh, on top of that, because they offer this enormous discount and then they give up half of that, what they have left, you know? So kind of like, if you think if you had a hundred dollars, you discount 50% on that and then you give 50% to Groupon. Yeah. So you're making 25% of your original right. asking price on whatever you're selling. Yeah. And so... You know, like you can look at it as a lost leader or something, you know, like, hey, this is just we're getting people in the door. And that's the whole idea. Get people in the door that want to come back. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's like one way to, that's a strategy that they use. And, and um, you know, it works for some businesses, but I wanted to, to create a platform where they could consistently use it. You know, you don't have to do like this one bit special. So our deals aren't you mentioned the buy one, get one free at at Cahill's, and that's a that's a great deal. Uh, and you, you see some of those other ones like that, but um, you don't necessarily find like the blockbuster specials, right? Mm-hmm. But what you will find are stuff that's in your area or in your you know in your town, in your community, in your neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, so you know it's a local business. Uh, most of the times we work with even locally owned businesses, uh, and then you know you can save money and go support these businesses and check out what's going on in your in your community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I think that like the model definitely works because um, I'm personally a, a pretty pretty poor person, so I'm not a, a <laughs> usual Kate Hills frequenter. And it was like nice to get me back in there and you know have have their food because it's not somewhere I usually even comes to the top of my mind when I'm looking for somewhere to go out to yeah. eat. But yeah, it's like you know it, it comes up on my cuneo. I push going to the bank, <laughs> then I go eat, and I'm like, all right, that's nice. But uh, yeah, so was that the group on? Um, concept was this kind of like the first iteration was it uh what came first did you want to have like an idea to start something and you stumbled upon this idea or was it like um i want to start a 
you looked at Groupon and you're like, now I want to start something because I see that. Yeah. So, um, it was kind of both coming together at the same time. So like, uh, when I was, uh, I was traveling, um, in Southeast Asia and I lived in Korea before, uh, and then got to travel around Southeast Asia and started up, um, I, so I was a ba- uh, scuba diver and then I was, had all my scuba diving gear in my backpack. So I just started a blog about it and I wanted to try to monetize that and then just like keep that going. Mm-hmm. So it would fund my traveling, which is really hard to do, but it's just like any business it's really hard to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that was kind of like a first crack at a business. And when I came home, I just didn't know, you know, what I was, what I was going to do. And, um, and then kind of stumbled into this, uh, you know, like the whole story about getting on a group on and stuff. And, and then I just kind of clicked. I was like, well, how could I, how could I make it better? Yep. Um, I, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. I want to do something. Uh, how can I make it better? And so, yeah, I kind of, it was just kind of both of them, I think, coming together at at the same time. That's like, yeah, I, I think that that's like really really important to look back on you know Mm -hmm. when you're when you're uh you know whenever you hit those trials and tribulations throughout starting something and you have to look back on like okay why am i doing this and another thing you hit on was that uh the scuba diving Mm -hmm. or uh the blog you know like Mm -hmm. every i feel like everybody who gets out of like high school or college and is like okay i want to you know they learn about passive income for the mm-hmm. first time They're like, okay I, i'm gonna monetize a blog yeah. and it's like that's the same as starting any other business it's like it's gonna be a 40 hour a week minimum yeah. for you like yeah. You, yeah you're gonna have to put in so much 10 times the back end work mm-hmm. to like make your easy money yeah yeah unquote. exactly yeah you get to and i'm not there but uh you get to passive income by you know, working triple, quadruple the amount of time beforehand. Yep. So then it like evens out to like, oh, okay, you're actually working. So like if you stretch that out, then when you finally reach passive income, it's like, oh, you're still mm-hmm. like averaging 60 hours a week. And, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what do people say? Like entrepreneurs are the only people who will work 80 hours a week for themselves to not mm-hmm. have to work 40 for yeah, somebody right. else. Yeah. <laughs> it's Which true. Like th- that's kind of, you know, um, I was just talking to somebody today actually about like, you know, sometimes like I'll, you know, I'll be up till two in the morning and then get up at five thirty or something, you know, and get mm-hmm. something done or work, but I can't like sustain that. And so I'll do that, you know, when I, when I need to get something done or if I'm feeling energy. Uh, but then sometimes I need a nap at like 2 PM, yeah. you know, and I'll take like a 30 minute nap or something. And so it, it's just nice to be able to have that flexibility. And so, you know, I mean, that's what, if I had a company and employees as well, that's what I would do. If, like if you need to do that, you're going to be more productive after that. So I'd rather, that makes more sense to me Yep. to like re-energize yourself and, you know, definitely. So that's kind of the flexi. That's why I like that, you know, that I've heard that quote before, but it's like, yeah, you do, but it also, you do that because you, you get that flexibility. You don't have to answer to somebody yes. else's rules. And that's worth a lot of, mm. a lot of money and headache yeah. almost <laughs> to, to not have to like, just to live on your own terms. Yeah. It is. So like with, you know, with being, uh, founder of a, a business that's you know still still gaining traction mm. and is a is a thousand hours of work to be done at all times do you have like a schedule do you follow or like any type of uh you know i feel like every business guru has like a philosophy on like how to structure your day or how mm. to like live your life do you do you follow any of that kind well, of stuff i'm no guru but, uh, <laughs> well i mean like do you follow anybody else's that you've heard yeah. maybe yeah um no i was, I was laughing because uh i don't so maybe that's why i'm not a guru is because <laughs> i don't <laughs> um i you know i uh i do i have a board um so i have things like to do mm-hmm. working on and done uh so that's kind of how i keep track of that okay Put sticky notes up there that's that really helps just to visualize it um and i'm i'm a big note taker uh mm paper you know it's funny because like i have i mean it, it's a it's a digital company and it's, mm-hmm. you know it's technology but the basic pen and paper helps me remember it better and like just to see it um helps so like that's kind of how i do it and i just have my workspace right there yep. and i see what i need and i cross off stuff um but like if i have a project or like a you know a larger scope um I just try to break that down into as many steps as possible Mm -hmm. and then just, okay, let's get this, 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 uh, because a couple things I, I see that as a, you're, you're taking steps to the, to the goal. So you're accomplishing things. Mm -hmm. And to me, it helps Mm -hmm. just to like keep, keep going and energy and stuff like that. Uh, but then too, like 
if you have this goal and you're like, okay, I'm here and I need to get there and you just start going that way mm -hmm. and then you're going to look at that when you're there, you're going to, like, whenever is a plan always, yep, 100% yes. the right way. Yeah. So the more that you can break it down and look at it, the more that you can then get to the point you're going to faster, I think, because you're going to have to make these changes mm -hmm. and, you know, and... I'm so jealous of that level of like delineation that you just explained, like the breaking it down to into a thousand steps. Um, because I know like personally my biggest, uh, blocker towards like progress and uh, positive forward momentum at times is like looking at big projects and being like, okay, I have to set aside Saturday to do mm. that, you know? And then like Saturday comes and uh, something comes up, you know, and it's like, oh my God, when am I going to find time to do that big project? Yeah. When, you know, if you look at it throughout the week and you're like, okay, I can write, you know, this piece of copy for this on Monday, you yeah. know, and just set that aside and be able to put a check mark next to that and keep that forward momentum going. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just like, that's, that's been my biggest hurdle. Um, in starting my own stuff is that I tend to like sit down and when I'm working, I work for like 10 to 12 hours straight through, yeah. you know, leave the, leave the room to go get water is yeah. basically like yeah. my work schedule. Um, and I just like, yeah, rock, rock stars and, and yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Big Red Bulls. Stars. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, back in college, that's what it was. Yeah. But, so, and that's how, that's how I was too. Like I would take, this there's the same thing you know mm -hmm. and and i'm still like not perfect at it, but that's the goal that's what i try to do is break it down like that um and you know the more you do it just practice anything the more you practice that the better you get um and the better i've got but it's still like it can because it can be daunting when you're like dude i've got this whole big thing you know and it's like i gotta i know i need to do this section of it and you're like man i don't like that section but like what part of that do you <laughs> like or how can you break it down yep. to then tackle that and get rid of it Absolutely. And, move on to the next thing. and do you work from home? Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, so yeah, that's I, I recently just like came to grips with that I cannot work from home mm -hmm. full time because uh, it's so easy to be like on ah, twenty <laughs> minutes. Let me let me do this this let me watch this show for twenty minutes and then I'll do it. So I uh, actually just took the leap and got myself uh, a desk membership over at Springboard Coworking, which I love. Yeah, and I recommend to anybody who's like trying to start their creative yes. uh, side project, whatever it is, like it's, I, I'm, I'll say the price. I, it's, it's $50 a month is what you pay for a desk over at Springboard Coworking. And I think that freeing up that mental space and being able to go into a work center, mm -hmm. um, if you're having trouble, you know, this is for anybody who's like having trouble sure. getting their thing started. And um, it's just being able to go to a work center puts me at least in a completely different frame of mind. And it's like, it's very much going into work mode and um, going into the office. And then I'm able to complete like the more menial tasks for the day. And then a lot of times, like I'll go home and I have the, the basically specked out iMac where I can like do my heavy editing on mm -hmm. and I'll take care of that stuff from home. But yeah, I just, uh, I've really found that having an office over at springboard has been like the difference maker for yeah. me personally. Yeah. And that for sure. And not only, I mean, just being around the people there, mm -hmm. you know, springboard's awesome. I love springboard. Um, you know, all the, the people that I know that are there are fantastic and they're just the driven, uh, you know, just creative people that want to see other people do well. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you can surround yourself with people like that, then, I mean, it, you know, Absolutely. It's, it's better for you and, and everybody. So. It's a huge win. And yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna plug something right now, too, is uh, First Friday Coffee. Like, if anybody in Sioux City is interested in learning more about the mm -hmm. entrepreneurship scene and, like, getting involved and connected in any way, like, I definitely recommend that anybody goes to First Friday Coffee Lloyd was actually the April, um, yeah, last one. Yeah, the April speaker at First Friday Coffee. I'm going to be the May speaker. Oh yeah. And yeah, oh, and nice. what? Yeah, so it, there you go. First, <laughs> yeah. you, hear, you heard it here one first. Punch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, like the the whole idea with First Friday Coffee is that it's basically a once a month event that happens at 9 a.m. on the first Friday of the month in the Springboard co working office space where uh, local entrepreneurs, people who are starting projects, starting any type of small business, and even some small businesses that have been operating for a bit, um, basically the founder or the team will come in, they'll tell their story, um, kind of give a little background of the company, the journey to get there, and what's next on the agenda. And uh, not only do you get to hear about what local people are doing, but you also get to see uh, – uh, other people who are also interested in entrepreneurship and be able to, you know, meet them, shake hands, um, 
So, yeah, I definitely recommend that anybody interested in getting their feet wet in this space in Sioux City attend those meetings. It's a great yeah. first step. And even if you're outside of Sioux City, like, yeah. just come check it out. Um, it, the networking aspect of it is huge. I mean, I love hearing the story, of course, you mm-hmm. know, for sure. That's like, that is the best part. But then you get... Then you know you get to you get free coffee, which is mm-hmm. great. Yeah, it's a free uh, event too. I should have said that. Yeah. Uh, but then yeah, you get to network with like like-minded people, which mm-hmm. is always good, and and there's just really really uh, fun, um, interesting people that attend as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, great questions are always asked, and you just learn learn a ton. It's hard, like I get you know it's hard because if it's at nine a.m. on a Friday, some people can't get away. Um, mm-hmm. I'm hoping that they start live streaming those as well. Like that'd I be think cool. That would be. That'd be helpful. Maybe um, I'll just do that this... I might should, just do yeah. it this coming Wednesday, May... Or Friday, May 4th, I believe. Yeah. The yeah. first one. I don't want anybody asking or giving me any May the 4th be with you jokes <laughs> at all. I'm cutting anybody off you know, who I'm even tries it. I'm going to do it. that. All right? You'll be kicked <laughs> out. I'm bringing security, <laughs> escorting out immediately. Don't give me those Star Wars references. <laughs> I'm just going to come dressed as Darth Vader... All right, well, <laughs> then you'll play your own self. All right, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, um, so have you, like, how has the reception been um, with the audience in Sioux City? Because I know personally and, like, kind of the stigma is that a lot of times Sioux City is a tough audience to kind of break into and turn on to new ideas more or less, but mm-hmm. how do you feel like that? Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's... It's easy to, okay, so I've gone through this whole kind of roller coaster on this topic. Because mm-hmm. um, it's easy to say, oh, you know, it's everybody else. It's not, it's yeah. not my, it's not me. My business is great and what I'm doing is perfect, mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's easy to pass judgment or pass that, that off to people. Um, I think people have been really, really, the people that use it, that mm-hmm. like Tunio or that see, you know, what I'm doing and, and love the local aspect of it, extremely supportive. Even people that don't use it are intrigued and ask about it. Um, you know, but there's a, like, let's be real, you know, there's a million apps out there. Yep. So, like, how do you, how do I break, what am I, how do I do it to break through to get on these people's phone or get mm-hmm. on people's phones? Um, so... You know, I mean, I think I think one is it's finding um, how I can better my business to appeal to people, not necessarily like are people, you know, trying to figure out more about my business. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of a political answer I'm giving you, like, a, but yeah. I think that um, I think that there's there's a ton of support. Um, you know, I I in a, in a utopia it would be like everybody would download it and check it out and mm-hmm. give me feedback and all this and that. Um, but I love the support that I get here um, and outside of here. Um, uh, you know, businesses on the other hand, like that that's tricky because it's new mm-hmm. you know, or it's a newer thing. Um, you know, comfortability is 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 easily. Uh, easily it's just easy for businesses right so like Mm -hmm. they've done certain things the whole time and now i'm this new guy that comes in and is like hey i've got this thing that's great uh it's inexpensive and we're reaching people left and right we're on this phone um you know we handle everything and they're like yeah but you know who are you i don't know you Mm -hmm. um you know i I, i'll wait and see Mm -hmm. and then you know it's like well yeah but i need you to be on here so i can prove it right to you and others and so it's like this battle but uh I think that just just to keep going and like keep putting yourself out there, I think people start to see that, and they have. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're you know we keep growing, and this like I said, the support we did is is great, and yep. would always love more. I'm super stoked that you said um, it's not it's not why aren't the users on it? It's like why why are the users not why am I not good enough for the you mm-hmm. know whenever like that has to be like the entrepreneur's question mm-hmm. is like what am I doing wrong that is creating a situation in which the users aren't adopting to my product mm-hmm. because I feel like there is on the other hand as much as the, the like the trope of oh Sioux City uh the average person in Sioux City doesn't want to uh, support a local deal you know or whatever um and I don't think it's necessarily that because I think it's really easy for business owners to fall into that trap where they start saying like, oh, people in Sioux City just don't give a shit about what I'm doing with my widget, you know? And 
so often I think that there also has to be some level of accountability on a business owner where it's like you're not competing like you're not the only local person mm-hmm. that like all people aren't running around with their credit card in hand looking for <laughs> a local person right, right? <laughs> you're competing against everybody yeah. you're competing against or you're competing against a national marketplace and it helps if you have you know? exactly and it helps if you have a product that stacks up well as as well if not better than the national competition Mm -hmm. and then it's just a plus that you're that you're local you know it's not like you don't i i feel like so many times people just want uh the automatic like i'm local you have to support me Mm -hmm. you know and whether that be anything whether that be uh your restaurant your product you're making or you know even if you're like a band like people you know people say oh sioux city audiences don't go to local shows it's like Dad sold see, out at the Marquee. Yeah, I see a lot, you know, of, a lot of Al, yeah. Alejandro sold out at the <laughs> Conservatory of Music twice now. It's yeah. like it's they they do. You just mm-hmm. have to build your following. You have to take your time on the back end to really invest in your audience. Yeah, that's true. And I, you know, it's it's um, it, it's just that frustration that builds up in people. Mm-hmm. You know, and like uh, it's just it's hard when you're uh, a musician, an artist, a businessman. Uh, you know, it, when you're when you have your own thing that you're passionate about and you're on the inside, you know, and you, you mm-hmm. just see all the, the little itty bitty bits of it. Mm-hmm. And it's easy to like, look and look at what you're building or creating or making mm-hmm. and saying like, Oh man, if I just tweak this or tweak that. So like you can start to become really critical of it. Yep. Um, and then you just kind of let that frustration out when thing, you know, you don't feel like you're getting the love in return and, mm-hmm. and it's hard. And like, I'm guilty of it. I've done that numerous times, burned mm-hmm. many bridges doing that. But I think, you know, you just keep going and you, you know, as long as you can just, all right, like it, maybe it is me or, you know, or mm-hmm. what can I do to make it better? Why? And I learned this, uh, through a, a thing called venture school in town. Um, okay. Yeah. So put a little plug for venture school. Um, but it's it's great because it really teaches you how to get into your business and then learn how to make it better. Mm-hmm. And you do that by talking to people in the community or people that you want to work with. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're working with the wrong people. Yep. You know, maybe you built this whole thing and you're selling it to the wrong group of people or they don't even want it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So then it's easy to be like, yeah, you know, I, I, if you go and do that homework, you're going to find out it's the truth. Period. Most definitely. You know? Yep. So yeah, it's so... If you got a business, check out Venture School. Yeah, that's they a, do it like every year. I'll, co- I'll co-sign that plug. I mean, I've never been through it, but I actually know uh, Adam Gontrowski right now is yeah. going through it, and he says nothing but great things to say yeah, yeah. about the whole program. He says he's learning a ton, and I, I'll take his word for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm definitely gonna look into it right now. I'm like, I'm kind of uh, working on honing on my client side, you know, my client services side, kind of honing my product and getting like really the verbiage and the exact like details all kind of settled down right now, which is uh, uh, currently one of those things that's like a, I need to stop looking at it as a full product or mm-hmm. project and just like piece by piece yeah. work through it because, yeah. um, you know, so like, especially with what I'm doing is like um, creating, I'm creating original content and creating site client service content all at the same time. Um, so like, 99% of what I s- people see on the internet that I post is like unpaid, you mm-hmm. know? So it's like, I always tell people like, yeah, that's the unpaid stuff. Yeah. Everything else yeah, is the, yeah. uh, <laughs> I have, have to pay my, I have to pay it, my right? bills yeah, so when, yeah. <laughs> w- in order to put out that that's stuff. That's the fun so. stuff. You yeah. Know, you did do, yeah. Which is exactly. fucking amazing by the way. You appreciate it. Yeah. Your videos are yeah. top notch stuff. So, uh, I was, I get in the YouTube, ra- I wish you had more up there as always, you know, <laughs> working on it. Like, yeah. yeah. You should have like, you should be posting one every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Come I'll on. just tell my, tell my girlfriend. It's, it's <laughs> so never going to see you. Sorry. You know, it's just, yeah. it's, you're playing the long game. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. So, uh, and, and like you mentioned that, uh, you know, you have to like refine what, uh, reverse engineer, like why, if it's not working, why isn't it working? Yeah. I kind of had like one of those moments today, actually, I posted this just time lapse video on my Facebook of like Hamilton at night that I shot on my way home from another shoot on Sunday uh-huh. night. And uh, like it was like literally all in. It was like a 20 minute deal. I just set up a camera for 15 minutes, then dropped the video from my camera to my phone. And uh, it's gotten like 400 views and a couple shares and all kinds of likes and comments today. Yeah. And it's like more than any video I have on my YouTube right now that I've like invested all of this time right. and money and equipment into. I'm like, damn, 
damn, Maybe care this much it. about that's my other it. stuff, yeah, guys. That's it. <laughs> yeah. But you could use that to then get people, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, because there's a lot, of, your stuff's amazing, it's top notch, but there's a lot of people doing that, and there's a lot of talented yep. people doing that, you know? So if you can stand out in some other way mm-hmm. and then bring people in, and yep. then they're going to start clicking, oh, what's this? What's this? Exactly. What, yeah. Like, what is it? What, uh, what's your no cut or? Uh, straight work, no yeah, cut. Yeah. Like that, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, just how do you get people to look at that? Precisely. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and that's truly a national game. Like that's, mm-hmm. or that's a truly a worldwide yeah, yeah. game is that like, you know, you got, and I'm not so sure there's not aliens from somewhere else. Like putting videos in here. So dude, it could be intergalactic. That's dude. what, have you seen? Have, or I, I haven't <laughs> even seen the videos, but have you heard about like those uh, weird videos that were making their way onto like YouTube kids? Uh-huh. There was like, I guess there was like some like spam account that was creating cartoons that were just like the weird twisted cartoons where like Spider-Man would like throw a beer bottle at a baby and these like weird like on the YouTube the kids YouTube. Yeah, the, but like it was these videos that like somebody was like specifically engineering to fit into the algorithm of like the the play next playlist. Yeah. That uh you know cuz it was using like like Spider-Man yeah, and all yeah. these like kids cartoon action figures and all that kind of stuff and like i guess youtube was like having a huge deal with it they, like they could not figure out how to get these videos to stop popping up in uh-huh. kids playlists and it was actually like a, a big controversy for a while that really? they were like unable to protect people's children from these i guess i guess like Weirdos. the the videos were like that uh what's that, what's that uh when it's not like horror but it's like uncanny like it's the uncanny valley where it's it creeps you out and you don't know why exactly uh, it's so weird right it's like yeah i know what me, you mean but i don't know the i don't know for the me word. it was like uh the... willy wonka you know charlie really? and the child yeah. that movie was like the scariest movie to me growing up that was that was <laughs> I my guess as a horror kid movie. though yeah yeah i yep. get that that and like uh matilda any yeah. movie where like <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> it's like children show, being yeah. children being tortured <laughs> it, and nobody really caring about it really throws me <laughs> threw me off as a kid. Man, yeah, but you know, if you go back and watch some of that stuff that we were watching when we were kids, and I'm even I'm a little older than you, but uh-huh. um, it's just like damn, that's like racist shit and like yeah, you know, misogynistic and like and that was okay. Yeah. And it was like yeah, I get why you're a little creeped out. So you know, like they, oh yeah, you shouldn't be watching that as a kid. Especially like the well, in kids movies, I feel like kids movies as a genre outside of Disney movies weren't really a thing before like the early nineties. Yeah, that kind of like yeah, when uh, yeah. Little Giants and uh, you know like Ninja Sandlot Turtles and that kind of and, stuff yeah. came around. Yeah, like before that. I mean, maybe I maybe it's just because it was before my time, but yeah. I don't really. I'm not familiar with like any iconic kids characters besides yeah. like Ses- Sesame Street was like a kids show, Mr. Rogers, that kind of stuff. But yeah, well, I mean, there's got to be yeah, yeah there's probably. But uh, you know, I think just like anything else, it was just like maybe there was like, you know, one or two. We're gonna have like some older people be like, "You idiots!" Yeah, dude, yeah. This is my favorite dude. Like Cue Ranger Rick or something. Yeah, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure. Uh, cue up the, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Tell me how much you hate put me. Put in the comments. Yeah, yeah. Put in the comments. What was your favorite <laughs> kids movie in the straight. 80s? Yeah. <laughs> uh, now that I'm thinking of it, I know that there was like a bunch of animated movies, you know, like yeah. the early Looney Tunes stuff. And but all that. I don't even like, is it gonna be, like, I never got into like 80s movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like just even adult movies. I mean, it, this is a side note, when I, was a, uh, when I was a little kid, my babysitters would let us watch like, Nightmare on Elm Street and Halloween and oh, stuff. I'm sure and I mean, parents I'm like, were stoked about paying yeah. them. <laughs> 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 yeah, they were, they were, yeah they were, it was like they were like, yeah, sure, whatever. It was yeah. like it was you know it was the late eighty, early nineties, and like yeah, sure, go yeah. ahead, like go ahead. It's like two in the afternoon. We're watching like Nightmare on Elm playing Street. playing it real fast and loose back <laughs> yeah, in the eighties. Yeah. That's, <laughs> <it. laughs> that's funny. Yeah, so, I did. I was, but you know what? Shaped me up all right. I guess you turned out okay. I can yeah. blame uh, anything on that. <laughs> <laughs> I like because you know. I would. I think I didn't like really watch horror movies until I was maybe like the third grade or something. It was like when I saw there was like Stephen King. We we'd go over to my buddy's house and his parents would like let us get like a Stephen King movie, a blockbuster, yeah. right? <laughs> and I watched it and like I'm playing it cool in front of my friends and then I just like went home and for like weeks Crime. afterwards it was all I could think about when I'm trying to go to bed. And there's this movie, a uh, Pet Cemetery, where. Oh, it's just sc- was, scarring. Yeah. There's like a the little kid after he gets comes back to life and is repossessed. Sto- spoiler alert from this yeah. movie from 1986. And uh, somebody's like standing next to a bed. I think the kid's dad is standing next to a bed. 
and the kid reaches out from under and like cuts his Achilles tendon with the with the scalpel. <laughs> but like that, like kid reaching out from under the bed. I think I like ran and sprinted, jumped into my into my bed <laughs> from like years. ten feet yeah. away for like ten years or for like years after that. Yeah, I just wasn't. I wasn't ready to risk that. Yeah, <laughs> your girlfriend's like, dude, stop jumping in the bed. I got these long Dutch Achilles <laughs> yeah. on me that I just can't stand to be snapped. You got your your yeah. leather boots you wear to bed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So finally explains why I wear combat boots to sleep. <laughs> That's good stuff. I like it. Yeah. So, uh, like, what's do you, do you have a what's is there a future for Cuneo as far as like expansion for different cities or even like product offerings? Yeah. So um, we just uh, and actually I so I wore this bow tie today. I dig it because I wanted to be. I, I noticed that the people you've had on, I'm, I'm so far the best dressed. You are. So you are. I. I'll take that for now. And then when you have your Sioux City Award show, I'll be the first one to ever wear a bow tie. So that just locks me in as an Perfect. automatic award. I love for, it. For, <laughs> you know, so so then I, I did a spot at the award table and all that. Mm-hmm. Kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. The front table. Yes. Yes. I'll take that. Uh, so I got to get my speech. I'll get that prepared, but that's all right. Um, so uh, second announcement is that we, um, Cuneo just partnered with Powell Broadcasting. So, um, which is fantastic because that's, uh, Powell's, you know, I mean, th- there is an established entity in Sioux mm-hmm. city. They do, uh, either great at promotion. Yep. Um, they have, uh, a tremendous, uh, marketing package that they can offer to their clients. Yep. And then Cuneo just, excuse me, rolls right up into that. I'm worried, uh, that the average person isn't going to know Powell broadcasting. Um, yeah. So if you ever listen to Q102.3, uh, you should, because then you'll start to hear some Cuneo. Yep. Spots on there. Uh, recorded a, a deal with Moose and Google cool. not too long ago. And then uh, they actually have another thing that they run. Um, so Q102.3, and then they've got um, some other stations as cool. well. Cool, 99.5, 105.7. 1360 on AM. Yeah. Um, so I think I want, I want to say it's five altogether, but I could be wrong. Um, um, yeah, it's 1360, Q102. K, uh, I think that they have one in Lamar's oh, as well. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's, I, I've already lost track. Plan I'm going to throw us off here, but yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, but like, but the Cuneo side, uh, fit really nice with Q102. So that's kind of where it's going with them. Um, but, uh, so partnering with them, uh, helps, uh, the business Cuneo to, expand and reach more businesses, more users. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I can take care of kind of the back end and make sure everything's running smoothly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, focus on kind of the functionality of it. Yep. Uh, cause it takes a whole lot of time to build the relationships with businesses, uh, you know, build the marketing with users. It takes a lot of money and energy to build a brand. Mm-hmm. Um, and so by offering them the platform, to sell and offer as a package or as an option to their clients um, allows us to work together and free up some some time for both. But um, so yeah, so so that's kind of that's where we're at here. Um, and then you know what I want to see is Cuneo go across the country mm-hmm. uh, first, and then and and then international. Yep. Um, you know you got to dream big, right? And break down those steps on exactly. how to get there. Uh, so. You know, the next place we go is, you know, it could be the same model as this. And Mm so it's just kind of trying it out and seeing, um, you see, you know, it's an opportunity and, uh, I guess we'll kind of see, you know, where we go from there. Um, but because it's technology, uh, we can build it in so many different ways. And so like, if we see something changing or if we want to make it different, you know, um, we can do that because it's, it's just, it's software, Mm -hmm. uh, which is fantastic. Yes. Uh, that's what I love about it. And, um, you know, we've already done that. So we started, it was uh, three times a day we would send out, you know. So actually, I, and we're this far in, I haven't even explained how Cuneo. Hopefully yeah. by this point somebody is like, what the hell is Cuneo? Uh, and they've like, paused the video and gone out and downloaded the app, which you should. Uh, it's for free. Um, and spell it too, just so. Q-N-E-O. I got it right here. Nice product. Oh, placement. nice. Dig it. Uh, <laughs> on accident, I think. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, q and it's a free app. Uh, and then what we do is we send out uh, cues. Um, and we used to do this three times a day, and morning, afternoon, evening. Uh, and we just 
you know, again, it was like I was new, uh, thought, you know, you just build it and then people will download it and why aren't they type of thing. Yep. Um, and then we realized it was just too much. So we then went, after a while, we went to once a day and then now we're even at just three times a week, which is mm-hmm. great because it gives people time to get in and look at it. Everybody's busy with their, you know, with their lives and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so we're finding that this works pretty well. Um, so you know, that's just one example of how it's kind of changed mm-hmm. and how, you know, in the future we can make it even, even better just yeah. with technology. And let me slide in here, like yeah. as a user, like to give my like experience to the, uh, to the listener, just to uh, plug it a little bit part. further is that, uh, um, you know, it's, it, it gives you what a five, four to five cues, uh, basically in a group. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And then they're on your, they're on your phone for, um, 20 or 48 hours. Um, mm-hmm or providing it's not the weekend on Friday, they last a little bit longer. And, uh, when you see one that you like that you want to keep for a while, you can add it. There's like a bank button, you add it to your bank and then it like stores it in uh, a list of cues that you've saved and those stay on your phone for a week. Mm -hmm. Correct. So then it like, it gives you some time that you, you know, even though they're posting them three times a week, you don't have to use it within like the time period that is actually an active queue. You can bank it for up to a week. So, um, it's pretty convenient and, uh, it's nice to, I, I basically bank everyone for every restaurant that I go to. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, if I'm ordering this, I get this free. I'll just use that when I go there. I go every week for lunch. You know, mm-hmm. Taco Saguero is like the main spot that I use the most cues, <laughs> yeah, honestly. Yeah. So good. It's yeah. So good. Yeah. Just fire. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm like, I'm super excited because I think that the partnership that you have with Powell mm-hmm. is uh, a sign that, you know, I, as an outsider looking in, I know that like you've been running a legitimate business for a while, right? Mm-hmm. But I know that uh, an established business co-signing um, what you're doing like really legitimizes it. You know yeah. what I mean? Especially um, for the next steps for growth, like that's that's going to be the game changer. I feel like as an outsider. Yeah. So it's it's super cool to see that. It's super cool to see like a Sioux City business recognizing what you're doing and wanting to partner with that. And yeah, I'm excited to see where it goes. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Thank you. Um, and it is, you know, it's like, it was a lot of work. I mean, I approached them, um, it's, you know, a year, year and a half ago or something like that. And then I think it was the same thing. It was just kind of like, you know, eh, okay, you're new, you're young, you know, what is this thing? You know, you haven't really proven yourself. And, and a lot of times I still don't, you know, like some days I'm like, I prove myself more than I can. And then the next day it'll be like, Shit, I've improved myself at all. Who am like, I? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so you know, it's just like that. Keep, like, just keep going and keep going and keep pestering. You know, it's mm-hmm. like what I call it. It's just a negative word, but uh, you know, just stay relevant and like, yep. just you know, hey, I'm still here. You you know, you're interested. Don't be afraid of no, because if you are, you're gonna lose. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're you just have to always sell. Um, and not fake. Like, sell, selling gets a bad connotation, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. and I had it for a long time. I went to school for finance and economics, and just I didn't like it because I was like, is the business mindset? I was like, yeah. oh, business is dirty, it's bad, it's greedy. That like uh, Wall Street mindset, yeah, yeah it's just tough to engage in. It it was, and like I didn't see, and I, I'd kick myself now because I like took this big break, and I, I mean like I don't, there's no regrets because like you know I wouldn't be where I am now if I didn't. But mm-hmm. um, uh, what at the time I just wasn't smart, and I was I'm, I'm I'm frustrated. I wasn't smart enough to see the. There's a mul- you know, you can look at something from so many different angles, and I chose to look at one, at it one way, and I didn't like that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, so then I just thought, I just wrapped everything up into this big ball and said, no, nope, that's not for me because it's too greedy or something. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of non greed in business. Yep. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of, that's the approach, you know, that I'm looking at now. And I, that's what, that's a better way to look at it. I dig it. I dig <laughs> it. I think that, like, we have gotten a great, synopsis of what's going on at cuneo yeah i think that the listeners are going to hopefully engage with the app download the app check it out it's free it's on google play and ios correct and ios and soon uh you know this so right before this i said yeah i'm not really good with the t's you know because like i was like i should have been all day talking about hey we're gonna be on this video we're gonna be on live stuff and so i'm gonna tease right now because there's something coming up that i'm working really really hard on uh, and so stay tuned, follow us on Snapchat and Facebook, everything social is G E T Q N E O. Let's see, get Cuneo. Um, you can kind of see mildly mugged on Snapchat from time to time and 
um, <laughs> see some businesses and there's more of the uh, what's kind of happening with Cuneo on Facebook type of stuff. Uh, but yeah, check us out and then stay tuned for that kind of update as well. And download the app because it's free and you're going to save money. I love and it. support other local businesses. I love it, and I'm a, I'm a fan myself. So you heard it here. Yes. I'm I'm a, I'm a legitimate fan. I'm not I'm not bullshitting for the uh, for the uh, guest here. Um, so this brings up my favorite part of the show that we kind of close with here, more or less, mm-hmm. is the Sioux City's most slept on, <laughs> where I like to have my guests say like something that they love locally in Sioux City mm-hmm. that they think everybody should know about. And it doesn't have to be like something that's unknown. It doesn't have yeah. to be something's first week in existence. So, so I know you do this, uh, cause I watch your show. Um, so, and I know you've limited it to one pretty strict, but I try to. I've got, I've got a proposal for you. I'll do most slept on, but I've also got two other things. We won't call them most slept on cause I don't think that, but I think they need to be addressed and here's why. Okay. So I'll start with most slept on blue uh-huh. cafe, uh, on, and maybe it's not that slept on, but that it is so amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole thing called the block there. Are you familiar it's with? The, it's the fourteen hundred block of yeah. Pier Street. Yeah. yeah, right across from Lawas, mm-hmm. Kitty Cornish. Uh, but Gia, is like, she makes it all uh, there. It's uh, it's so good. They've got like it's the thirteen hundred block of Pier Street. My bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. You're My right. bad. Um, right by the coming door, right yep. that's down from the conservatory music. So it goes from the conservatory to the other end of the block. And, um, the whole thing's called the block. You can like get a membership to it. Mm-hmm. Um, they have like a, they have a skate park yep. in the back for the kids. They've got like a, an open room you can rent out if you have like events going on. Um, they've got a, like a little thrift store type deal or not thrift store maybe, but like a consignment shop thing. Or yeah. Something. I know, I know that it's for pretty, a while there cool was stuff. like a, th- uh, there was, I think there was another guy who was running one for a while and I think they might've taken it over. I'm, I'm not sure. I, and then right next to that is blue cafe and they've got live music in there. You go there for lunch. Uh, she makes this amazing, uh, tea, uh, and all the foods, all the food is, is great, but there's tons of great food in Sioux city, which I know you've mentioned your, your guests talk about it, and I think we all know that Sioux City has some amazing food options. But, um, you know, we, we, we just talked about Guero. Guero is amazing. Uh, tons of different great food options, but I think one of the most slept on is Blue Cafe, just yep. because it's so good. Um, but the other thing that we kind of re- referenced earlier was uh, is Cahill's. Because a lot of people think that Cahill's is, like, the swankiest place, mm-hmm. and it's nice. But mm-hmm. it's not that, like, it, like you... I don't, I feel, and I, I, I thought this way until I started to like work with them and see, like go in and like, and eat there. And, and like, it's like, you, you can go there on like a Tuesday or a Wednesday night. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't yeah. have to be, you know, people go out to, uh, I'll go to Applebee's or Olive Garden or something, like go to Cahill's. Yep. It doesn't have to be your anniversary. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I think a lot of people kind of have this idea, oh, Cahill's is a nice place. We only go there when it's nice, which is crazy to me. Yeah. And then the last thing is... Uh, you like people. I think either I, I, a lot of people un- get it and, and agree, but I think we just take for granted the Jitters Donuts. Okay, the best donuts yep. hands down anywhere. So I like that. If you have a chance to just swing in and grab Jitters Donuts, mm-hmm. fantastic. And now and and I'm not just saying that because I work with them. I'm saying that because they've got the best donut making machine. Like in history, yep. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's great. And the maple, for sure. Hands down, maple. Nice. So it's the donuts, it's the it's Cahill's, and then go check out the live music and the food at Blue Cafe, for sure. That's, I dig it. That's, that's a Lloyd Lee 3. Right <laughs> <laughs> so I've been doing this. I'm only on episode 8 here, and I'm just a moron who forgets everything I do. <laughs> um, so I don't know if I've plugged this one before, but... If even if I have, I'm uh, it's good enough for a, a repeat. Yeah, is Brew City Brewery that mm. exists at it's inside of Marty's Tap on Court Street. Don't know what block. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm not gonna say it because people. Oh, okay. even but more yeah, comments. it's it's at Marty's. Like, Google it. Was it 19, um, 18? I don't know. Hey, you, your guess is good. Mine's still like way down after you pass that. Anyway. And anyways, it's on. It's on. It's at Marty's Tap, out in the back. <laughs> or it, they brew out of the back, but they have uh, four taps on the bar. They have. Um, they brew locally, obviously, because it's Brew City B R I O U X. Yeah. 
Um, it, a play on Sioux City, obviously. And Which is great. That's yes, so it's a perfect yeah. name. And yeah. I actually tweeted like a year before they started it, and my exact tweet was, the fact that there's not a brewery in Sioux City called Brew City is criminal. And it's like, <laughs> and, and, and actually the guys that started it either. like had actually been uh, in the works of it from way before I really? made that tweet. Yeah, and it's actually my so my buddy Matt Kelly Hubert, and yeah, Matt Kelly. and Kelly Quinn, and um, they take a ton of pride in it. Like mm-hmm. every time I've been around them together, like that's all they're talking about is, you know, uh, the, the weeks that they have to wait for this batch and, you know, yeah, the, yeah. their availability to get this and um, how distributors <laughs> are going to be able to ha- handle their stuff. So, and this is not like a, Matt's my buddy and this is not because he's my buddy, mm-hmm. but they have legitimately the best IPA I think I've ever had. And it's the, it's called the Lemon Haze IPA. It's outstanding. I recommend it to anybody who's looking. And it's a, it's a great beginner IPA. Mm-hmm. It's not it's like it's not a double IPA. It's not going to like... Hoppy or the bur- better for me. But oh, I like summer, summer IPAs are hard to find yep. that are good. And, and this is a rolling, good summer nice IPA. Nice weather outside. Yes. Yep. It's, got, it's got a nice lemon, I, you know, lemon hoppy taste. I'm it's almost a- positive because I was in Marty's uh, uh, speaking with uh, Nikki last year. Mm-hmm. And... And I'm almost positive they had some of that up there. They they have they did taste testing taste test before yeah. they, they uh, actually it. opened up. Yeah, as yeah. a brewery, and it was uh, yeah. They, I I think that even like some of the taste testings they had weren't actual like weren't beers that they have as final products now. Oh, okay. Um, they were like iterations of the process, yeah. and uh, they have like uh. The IP, the Lemon Haze IPA, they have the Pretty Porter, they have the Peanut Buddha Stout, and they have the um, Dad Cream Ale, which is a collaboration with the rap group Dad, <laughs> and all of them are great. I, I'm not lying. It's it's a legitimately great yeah. beer, and I think that it's like a hidden treasure in Sioux City right now because it is inside of Marty's Tap, mm-hmm. and um, it's just like one of those gems that if you are at all a beer drinker a beer connoisseur um somebody who wants to be one of those things mm-hmm. i recommend to go, go get it, it out. it's nice. great yeah man yeah like that whole those guys just do awesome stuff like what they've done with marty's and marquee and mm-hmm. uh yeah i'm excited to have I, I i'm i love i'm an ipa guy i love different ipas i was gonna actually bring uh, i was gonna grab some bells <laughs> too hard that's my favorite of yeah. uh, go to but uh, I swung by the marquee actually to mm-hmm. grab some because uh, I didn't know if they sold it out of the marquee or not because I was oh okay yeah but they weren't open yet mm-hmm. so you out of luck Tough for break. you yeah. <laughs> for us but <laughs> we'll set up for the Budweiser All but right. uh, yeah I'll go, I'll go check it out I need to get out there cool. yes definitely recommend it well that brings us to the end you've plugged your uh, socials but give it to them one more time just yeah. so they know where to find you. Uh, just search around Cuneo, but you can find us at anything social, G-E-T-Q-N-E-O, so at Get Cuneo, uh, and follow us, check us out, um, throw me some, I, I just love feedback, uh, good, bad, and ugly, so, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, definitely not a yes man, uh, I want to know, like, what we can change and make it better, uh, if that's what you feel, so, rather than just saying, you know, oh, I don't like this, let me know, and mm-hmm. then we can fix it and make it better. Perfect. So tell me on some of, some of the social channels. And following along those lines, and where can we find you at? If Taylor? you are well, first, if you're if you're still listening, if you're just a beautiful soul who is held in here so until nice. the end, um, go ahead and leave in the comment section what your favorite '80s movie was, yes. and follow us on Face or Twitter, or follow me on Twitter, Taylor J G R O T E. Um, on Twitter and then Facebook, it's Honey Wave Media. YouTube, it's Honey Wave Media. Subscribe to that, please. Mm-hmm. It is so hard to grow a YouTube channel. It helps when any, whenever anybody's help subscribed. a guy out. This shit's awesome. Help me, help please. A guy out. Yeah, watch my music videos on there. There's so much yes. good stuff. I promise you, it's it's actually good. Um, yeah, and everything everything helps. Just leave you know leave comments, leave feedback, leave me ratings. I don't care if they're like. Don't don't leave bad ones. Just just leave uh, <laughs> constructive <laughs> yeah, criticism. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. tell us what tell tell me he's doing. But that is so hard. That's yeah. so hard. That uh, starting up. That was the first. You know, we talked about the blog. Uh-huh. So hard people. You have so many lurker. You call them lurkers, right? Mm-hmm. But so many people that will, will check it out. But mm-hmm. they're like, they. Eh, I'm not gonna comment. Like, just yep. comment. Say something. Yep. You know. I I've noticed that like 
oh my god, I'm gonna I'm gonna get into we got a couple <laughs> more minutes here. Is that I've noticed like there's this thing in uh, like the I the spread of information, right? Is that um, my immediate friend group and people that I know very very well on a first my first degree friendships, mm-hmm. they're you know, and it's it's the, I think it's the same universally. So it's not my friend group, but uh, people who are friends with somebody are not going to be their biggest advocates. They're going to casually share things and tell you that you're doing a good job mm-hmm. when they see you. But once you make it outside of that first degree of friendship circle, mm-hmm. those are going to be your fans. Yeah. And your fans are the ones who are going to really advocate on your behalf. They're going to like tell people at work. They're going to tell their friends. They're going to, they're really going to like shout your message if they're mm-hmm. believing in what you're doing. So like if you are somebody who we don't know each other personally, but you share my stuff. Thank you so much. Yes. I like <laughs> legitimately from like the bottom of my heart, there's like, you know, there's, I don't know, 10 people, 15 <laughs> people that are on like this on social networks, like really sharing my stuff. And I'm like, Oh my God, you guys are the greatest. Awesome. And yeah. I, just, I just want to send all of them a care package. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. it's yeah. cool. Like, don't be afraid to say hi. I'm just like, scared that I'm going to make them first degree friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Don't do <laughs> Yeah. It's over. Uh, yeah. It's this atmosphere. does a song. Some, something similar to that. So it's like, you know, yeah. you talk about, uh, yeah. It's like, it's funny. Cause like you have this certain relationship with them. You know, like they're they're close. They're like they know you inside and out because mm-hmm. they listen. You know, they watch all your stuff and listen to you. But like, yeah, yeah you don't want them to become that close because then all of a sudden it turns into a friend. You're not like, you know, you're not like yeah, and then yeah, it changes friends, so. the yeah. But <laughs> but it is. It's like a different kind. It's like a family. You know, it is because uh-huh. uh, you know. And just real quick, not to like steal your thunder, or, you know, no. or anything like that. But um, you know, I've had that. Like even in Iowa City. So uh, you know, we're in Iowa City as well. Mm-hmm. And like I have, uh, there's a guy there that like he'll just email me like long list of emails. Like, hey, I've been thinking about it. Uh, mm-hmm. Never met the guy, mm-hmm. you know. And he's just like, I just think it's cool what you're doing. Here's this stuff that I've seen uh, that I like that I don't like. And I'm like, that is just that is solid gold. Yeah, right there. yeah. You know what I mean? Real genuine yeah. customer feedback yeah. is about as good as it gets. And it's like, yeah, that means so much. I, I dig like, it. It's it's unreal. So, so please, Thank listeners, <laughs> people who people who pay attention to this, leave us some feedback. Yes. I love it. Um, but anyways, until next time, that's the Sioux City Show. Thank you. <laughs>